Life Audio. Welcome to the Crosswalk Devotional. We're glad to have you listening with us. Today's topic is finding Jesus in the Old Testament. We will return to our devotion right after a brief message from one of our sponsors. Finding Jesus in the Old Testament, written and read by Kyle Norman. Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Luke chapter 24, verse 27. Have you ever wondered why the disciples didn't think Jesus was a zombie? Why didn't anybody refer to Jesus as Jesus the friendly ghost? After all, the resurrection caught everybody by surprise. The disciples, they saw their teacher, rabbi, and friend crucified, dead and buried. And so in their mind, that was it. Jesus was dead and gone, and so were their hopes for redemption. That is, until Jesus showed up again. He appears in the garden. He shows up in the upper room. He walks along the road to Emmaus. And in none of those places does anybody believe Jesus to be undead, a ghost, or someone who faked his own death. Instead, they respond in worship. How did the disciples know that Jesus was the fulfillment of their redemptive hope? Well, the answer is quite simple. Jesus told them. Luke records that Jesus revealed the places in the scriptures that testified about himself. From Moses to the prophets, from beginning to end, Jesus helped the disciples understand how he filled God's promises. Have you ever wondered what scriptures Jesus may have pointed to? Jesus may have pointed to the story of Adam and Eve and how they are tempted into eating the forbidden fruit. We all know the story. But one of the curious statements that occurs in Genesis 3 is when God addresses the snake and declares, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Here, God describes a future savior, one born into humanity who would come to reverse the fall of the garden. Victory would be won. Redemption would be revealed but it would occur through sacrifice. The Savior would be stricken. From there, Jesus may have pointed to Melchizedek, the mysterious individual of Genesis 14. Just as Jesus is both King of Kings and the Great High Priest, Melchizedek is noted to be both a king and a priest of the highest. What is more intriguing, however, is the meal he serves to Abraham as a means of the blessing. Long before people could ever understand the significance, Melchizedek blessed Abraham with a meal of bread and wine. Did Jesus point to that scripture as a foretaste of the Last Supper? From there, Jesus may have pointed to Israel's entire sacrificial system, which was centered around the sacrifice of the Paschal Lamb. This lamb, without spot or blemish, was slain for the sins of the people. And the crucifixion echoes this. In fact, the Gospel of John makes clear that the crucifixion happens at the very same time that the Passover lamb was being slain in the temple. All of these references to Jesus takes place in the first five books of Scripture. And when we move into the prophets, we find statement after statement that speaks of the coming of the Messiah, as witnessed in Jesus. There are statements about where the Messiah would be born, what lineage he would be from, and where the Messiah would grow up. The prophets speak of the Messiah opening the eyes of the blind, healing the sick, and raising the dead. And in what comes to his death on the cross, Zechariah chapter 11 talks about the Messiah being betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Undoubtedly, Jesus would have pointed to the suffering servant passages in Isaiah chapter 53, that describe the crucifixion, 
and state that the Savior of the world would be pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. But in that same chapter, Isaiah speaks of the resurrection. Isaiah 53 verse 11 says, After the suffering of his soul, he will again see the light of life. And be satisfied, and by his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. This prophecy pictures the Messiah dying for our transgressions, having his hands and his feet pierced, rising again to new life in order to justify and save the world. Intersecting Faith and Life No wonder the disciples said that their hearts were burning within them as Jesus unlocked the scriptures. The resurrection connected all the various prophecies and verses which were sprinkled throughout the Old Testament, revealing the picture of who God is and what God's plan was and what redemption looked like. And guess what? It looks like Jesus. In the end, the resurrection isn't just a dream or a fanciful wish. The resurrection isn't something the disciples just made up or that the church thought was a great story. The resurrection is the culmination of all that God had been doing throughout the ages. And when we look at the whole movement of Scripture, we see one unified story, revealing Jesus to be the fulfillment of all of God's promises. And it is this fulfillment that caused the disciples to proclaim that Jesus is Lord. May we follow their footsteps. For further reading, read Psalm 22, Isaiah chapter 53, and 10 powerful Old Testament prophecies fulfilled by Christ on Crosswalk.com. The Crosswalk Devotional is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com.